So welcome to what will be episode two of Who's Zooming Who. Um, it seemed like a great idea last week doing one, uh, but now that I've set myself up to do a second one, I'm not really sure um, if, I can, uh, if I can quite follow um, the highs of last week. So who I did ask is a very old and a very dear friend of mine um, and colleague indeed in Waterford Student Technology, uh, Colm Dunphy. Uh, good evening, Colm. Thanks very much for... For volunteering, um, that's the old. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I suppose you're slightly younger than me, so we'll, we'll, we'll give you we'll give you that one. Um, Colm is a lecturer on our award-winning higher diploma in science and computer science um, program, which is a fully online program that's in its fifth year now, I think, um, and the last three, if not four, of those have been fully online, uh, and indeed this year. It won an award um, at the Education Awards for Best Use of Educational Technology. Uh, did I get all that right? I think so, just about. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, that that that's always a good start. So perhaps, um, Colin, you'd like to give us a brief introduction um, yourself. Um, uh, look, I know you, but um, lots of lots of the people maybe watching or listening to this may know you, but if they don't, let's assume they don't. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think I'm teaching in the college now 25 years at WIT. Uh, started uh, as a computer programmer, teaching computer programming, uh, but I have a big background in uh, media. Uh, so I moved into multimedia and digital media, um, teaching music, video production, photography, you name it. Um, and along the way, I got involved uh, through Laura Widger, your predecessor, uh, in CTEL um, and very interested in, in teaching online and technologies and trying to create better engagement, not just online, but in, in, in classes. Uh, so then fast forward a few years later and uh, we were delighted to be able to bring WIT's first fully online program, uh, the Higher Diploma in Computer Science. Uh, and we had a, a whole rake of technologies and we just wanted to try and figure out what we should be using so that anyone coming after us Here's the blueprint, um, and this works. You don't have to think about it. And can we make it easier? Can we make it better? Get a better uh, student experience and a better um, teaching experience as well. So I suppose that's that's my background. Yeah, excellent and and, and fantastic. Um, and we'll come back and speak a little bit more maybe about the program um, later on. But this evening, as we talk, um, it's just about an hour and a half uh, or two hours after. Uh, Tom Farrelly's Gas That Goes Global. And as you know, Tom was a guest of mine on this um, uh, podcast last week. Um, and he he had roped me into helping him get this thing organized. I'm probably biased, so I'm going to say it was a fantastic success. But you, you were watching it um, at, I suppose, some bit of a distance and some remove. Um, yes, I know that I had badgered you to, to, to make sure to attend. It was the website uh, that really made it, Ken, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, amazing, it's amazing what you can do with a WordPress team. Um, <laughs> so you, you, you watched the event live this evening. Um, yeah. what, were your, uh, what were your thoughts? Um, so I think it tried to capture um, the, the GASTA events at the EdTech in particular. I, I've been at that for a few years. Um, spoke at the last two and uh, I think he did manage to capture you know that atmosphere and, and uh, I thought that went very well uh, it was great to see speakers from different countries you know um, and with lots of different ideas um, and then every what was different I suppose was because it was online you get the advantage of being able to comment in real time um, and there was discussions happening in YouTube and also in Zoom um, and even just following the conversation, I, I was watching it through YouTube. So just following the conversation on YouTube was great. Uh, and I made a point of contributing, you know, when I heard phrases, you know, I made a point of double quoting that and, and posting it um, so that I'd, I'd have a, a couple of things to look back on afterwards um, and see, you know, did it resonate with other people, which, sure. which I think it did. So, yeah, it was, it was really good. Uh, definitely a success. And uh, what else would you be doing on a Tuesday night? Yeah, well, well we're, 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 all, we're all locked up in our houses. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's literally a captive audience. Um, so the seven speakers that spoke tonight, I, I hadn't known all of them um, until obviously I became involved in the event. Um, were, were some of them familiar to you? Were, 
I knew some of the names, um, so big fan of uh, Martin Weller. Um, but the, the person that I suppose that resonated most with me was um, uh, Lee Graves Wolf, I think her name yes. is. Um, uh, again, I would have I recognized Martin Brown's name and Tony Bates. Uh, they were the ones I would have been familiar with. Uh, but I think it was uh, Lee Graves Wolf was the one I resonated most with. But, but also the, the opening talk, uh, what's her name? Uh, Maha Bali, I think, from, from yeah. Egypt. Uh, you know, uh, straight away, you could, you could feel everybody resonating with, with the things she was saying. Sure. Um, I, I made a few notes here. Kindness, um, anxiety, stress, flexibility, equity, support. Don't be pretending. Be real. Um, and then, you know, this, this concept of synchronous and asynchronous, where, where at the moment, you know, people are saying on flexibility with asynchronous, but um, what really came across to me was, was the emotion that you can get with synchronous. Um, uh, so, yeah, that, that one, that one uh, resonated a lot with me. Um, with, with Lee Graves Wolf, um, the presence, uh, social presence and community are, Kind of key phrases that uh, jumped out at me, that, that resonated with me. So it wasn't just because she was a radio DJ, and uh... well, I actually put in a comment <laughs> there that um, I I have this theory. Uh, there must be a paper in it somewhere that I think radio presenters make really good, uh, or, or definitely helps with with teaching online. Because you know, if you if you've worked in a radio studio, you're talking to yourself in a room. And that's very much what it's like when you're, you know, teaching, particularly if you're teaching a, in a live environment or sorry, a pre-recorded environment. That's exactly what you do. Um, sure. And you have to learn that skill um, and listening to the silence, um, you know. Uh, so I, I kind of I put in a comment, as you know, in, in YouTube, uh, do, do radio presenters make the best online teachers? You know? <laughs> <laughs> not, not, I haven't checked for the answer yet. Yeah, but, uh, not, 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 that, not that you're in, in any way biased. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I, I, I probably should point out um, for, for those of you that, that may not know uh, Colm as well as I do, uh, Colm uh, is a DJ or ra was a radio DJ of many years standing um, uh, and indeed a club DJ as well. Um, and himself and another colleague of mine, Pete, uh, who's still actually on the radio, um, were, were probably the two drivers behind putting together our pods that we'll talk a little bit more about in, in a minute, which kind of, I guess uh, you could see the, 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 the radio studio crossover um, <laughs> in, 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 to, to, to a certain extent. And, and I think probably part of that column might be that um, most radio DJs aren't naturally uh, afraid of the sound of their own voice. And, and a lot of people who record their voice for the first time, that's probably one of the things that they find most uh, unnerving is um, do I really sound like that? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, just something jumped into my head. Um, you know, there's a couple of other people that spoke tonight. I'm just thinking of Mark Brown's opening comment, you know. <laughs> do I need you to say, remind no, anyone? <laughs> well, look, I, I, I think we're after the watershed. I, I don't know who's going to be listening to this. And he did say it, so, you know. Um, uh, and just grabbed everybody straight away. Did. He, he I don't, certainly... Mark. <laughs> yeah. And I, I learned two new words today. Um, okay. One is, what is it, refuseniks. Okay. Uh, from, um, I think it was Frank Rennie. Yes. Um, and he was, uh, he was talking about, you know, how people, and we've seen this with, with colleagues who, you know, really were anti-education uh, technology, anti-online, you know, that won't work. We don't want to do it. Um, and he was making the point when, when all of this is over, um, we're going to still have some refuse next. And they'll be saying, oh, yeah, it didn't work when we, when we mm -hmm. had COVID. Um, but, uh, you know, other people. Other speakers were talking about, you know, we're not actually doing online at the moment for a lot of people. They're replacing live classes, face-to-face uh, -face classes, traditional classes with the phrase I heard was emergency remote teaching. Sure. Um, and we need to clarify, you know, when we go back, uh, the difference between the two for those sure. who don't know. Um, yeah. No, no. Um, but the other, the other big word, uh, which, which <laughs> has to be the word of the night, um, hautagogy. Yes. Uh, I thought that was great. Yeah, self-determined learning. Excellent. Because uh, I, I, I had heard of it, but I didn't know what it meant. So I'm glad. I'm glad you know. Uh, oh, I wrote it down straight away. <laughs> I knew this was coming. So yeah. I have a few notes, you know. <laughs> uh, 
uh, very good. <laughs> the, 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 the interesting thing for me tonight, and I'm just going to throw this one out there because, I mean, look, you know more than, than myself um, are a technologist. And I think um, the, first, the first time I remember seeing you uh, with a computer might have been a, an Amiga 500 or something like that, right? <laughs> uh, which, which, which isn't today or yesterday. Um, no. And even though the, the, the conference uh, or the, the Gas to Go is Global event tonight, um, was ostensibly about online education, which at its heart is technology. Um, there was remarkably little talk about technology. Most of the talk was about um, human connections. Most of the talk was about um, providing pastoral care for students. Most of the, the talk was about um, doing right by students as opposed to um, look at this new LMS that we that can do X, Y, and Z. Um, as a matter of fact, technology barely got a look in um, when when you think about it, which well there was a whole there was a whole discussion on the YouTube uh, video uh, channel um, in relation to when people started online, you know, and the technology didn't exist really. Sure. You know, uh, I think somebody said nineteen ninety two, somebody else said two thousand and five. Uh, you know, you have tools and you just do what you can. You, you work creatively with those. And I think that was something that came out as well. You know, we don't want to just replace what we do in the classroom with, you know, the virtual version of it. Can we get yeah. more creative with what we're doing? And um, so, yeah, um, it's not about the tech, you know, it's, it, it's just an enabler. Sure. No, and, and absolutely. Look, I mean, look, that, that, that very much speaks to my own way of, um, thinking is that once you start making it about the tech you've 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 lost already it really is about the people and it's about um it's a it's on that ken you know we've we've seen this massive uptake in the use of zoom in the last month yeah Um, and i'm using it now yeah um but that's only because there's even a that, podcast. You yeah, know, about Zoom now, you know? yeah. That's only because this is called who's zooming who. Who's who's who's. It won't be connecting who just didn't sound um, <laughs> didn't but, sound right. And Aretha Franklin never saying about that. So you know. Um, but but somebody's somebody's got to look at the tech and work it all out and make it easy for everybody else. Sure. Right. And and I suppose I'm in that category, trying to look at the tech and then make it easy for everybody else. But the last thing you want to be doing then is when you are teaching. Is be worrying about the tech. You, yeah. want to, you want to simplify it all, and it's all about creating a great experience. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think uh, that that came across in, in tonight's talk. Yeah, but that's because you've got fancy lights and swirly backgrounds, and you know. Um... <laughs> well, what I'm doing is giving you the evidence you need so that you get a budget now to yeah, to, yeah. So to do this uh, yeah. on a higher but, level next time. Yeah, no, the only the only the only budget might be is if I if I move the table. This way, I'll have to budget. You know, right? <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm going for the very uh, low tech kitchen table uh, approach. And look, you know, it's 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 working kind of. I think uh, I don't know, maybe it's not. Mo- moving on from there, uh, and I guess part of the driver behind and, and part of the success um, of Gastigos Global was that. Lots of people have found themselves in this, uh, and look, I'm using the word again, unprecedented situation where, um, you know, it's it's it'll be five weeks this Thursday since WIT and and most everywhere else shut down. Um, I barely know what day of the week it is. So yeah, I uh, absolutely. Yeah, weeks. yeah, yeah. No, I, I think the best description of days I've heard at the moment is um, every day is blurs day. Uh, because <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's what day is it again? Um, and, and the Easter weekend was particularly tro- troublesome for me because Good Friday felt like a Saturday, and then <laughs> and then Saturday, Saturday felt like a Sunday, and then Sunday felt like just another Sunday. Um, and then yesterday being Monday, I, I really wasn't sure. But for the fact that I knew that the event tonight was on Tuesday, um, I probably would have been um, struggling a, a little bit. Uh, in terms of time but like four stroke four and a bit weeks ago almost five weeks ago um everybody found themselves suddenly thrown into the the deep end of having to um deliver remotely as opposed to 
deliver online in, in terms of it wasn't considered and thought out and there was lots of um bits to be reconsidered and we've had to redo assessments as you've known as you know um for a lot of our uh, taught undergraduate uh, and indeed postgraduate programs now you, you probably had a little bit of a, a head start on a lot of your contemporaries and colleagues in that um obviously your experience in the online higher diploma probably equipped meant, meant that this wasn't this wasn't a new phenomenon for you um but notwithstanding that um how have you found this sudden adjustment to that, that there, there is no um wit campus anymore the campus now exists virtually um i have to say it wasn't really a shock um and it didn't upset me in any way um probably because for the first time since i started teaching um this semester all of my teaching is online okay fully so i'm fully online this semester all my classes uh, all my hours fully online uh, that's never happened before uh, the way things panned out this semester that's that's where i am so when we were heading into this, you know, I was just saying, oh, yeah, be business as usual. Uh, for me, uh, I appreciate that a lot of my colleagues were, you know, weren't in as fortunate. And uh, I don't think I would have coped as well if I was trying to manage four face-to-face -face classes sure. um, from home. Uh, but, but all my classes were already online. Um, now, we did make changes uh, when we were delivering. Uh, even though our, our course is fully online, we realized very, very early on uh, through, through my colleague, Eamon de Lester, uh, he was very fast out of the blocks. And he said, we've got to do something for our students straight away. He said, a lot of them are um, on the front line. And he said, they're not, they just don't have the time to be able to keep up with the, the pace that we'll be going at. So um, we got permission, uh, even before there was any meetings for, for the other course boards, we got permission straight away to stretch out our delivery um, so the first thing we did was put a week in between every every week. Okay. So you know, instead of teaching every week, we put a, a week off in between every single week that we're teaching. And there's implications to that that you know has us teaching till um, in, into June, um, and right up until you know as late as we could possibly do it. Uh, but you know that was a, a pretty small thing for us to be to do. It, it was hard enough to. Well, not hard enough, but we, we did have to get permission to do it because there's knock on implications with exam boards and, and so on. Um, but I have to say, you know, everybody was open to doing what we could. Um, and, and that was I have to tell you, the outpouring online from our students, you know, was, oh, thank God. You know, I, even before we had that organized, we were in the middle of an assignment. And the first thing I did was said, right, um, you know, pushing the assignment out for at least another week. So, yeah. you know, uh, and then we ended up pushing it out another week because we could. Um, yeah, and, and I guess, I suppose I probably should point out as well, your program runs on a calendar year basis as opposed to an academic year basis. So yeah, this would be, this wouldn't be a, the, the, the final semester of a, of a year. It'll be the first semester of the year. Um, no, but uh, we have three cohorts online, so sure. they're all at different stages. Yeah. Um, so, you know, th and we've had to look after all three. Um, but, um, no, it, it, it was just once we got permission to do it, uh, we pushed it out. Now there's a couple of knock-on implications. You know, we, we tend to do these um, on-site days for anybody sure. who can make them with industry coming in, but your industry are not in a position to come in yeah. this June. They won't be. They'll be, they'll be trying to catch up. Uh, so we just push things out and uh, but we're very fortunate that we can do that because the program is online so it has given the students flexibility it has given us flexibility uh, i think a, a phrase we heard tonight was resilience you know is the education system resilient um this this program is you know sure. it's very easy to move it out um and you know most of our assessment uh, is already non-exam anyway Okay. Uh, we we do assignments and portfolios and interviews and all of that, uh, and that's worked out very well. Um, just as rigorous, um, you know, we we do uh, on the spot interviews for each for each hand up. Um, but I think one of the things again, your final speaker tonight um, mentioned that if there's one thing comes out of this whole uh, experiment uh, or emergency reaction, is that we need to get away from the exams. Yeah. When we first started talking about educational technology, 
uh, and looking at how we build engagement and, and assessment, uh, we were talking about that years ago. Uh, but it's, it hasn't happened in, in many disciplines. And I appreciate there, there are some scenarios where an exam is better, but we've just proven that we can assess without an exam. Yeah, I, There are no exams in third level this year. I'm, I'm going to be slightly controversial and say I, I can't really think of any situation where an exam is better, right? Um, and I, I'm saying that with my student hat on after having set exams in the not, not too distant past. And, you know, there is never a situation in your life ever again where you're going to be put in a room for two hours and have to come up with ideas out of your head um, or answers out of your head. You know, mm. the, 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 the entire um, knowledge base of the world exists on your mobile phone. Um, yeah. I, I think it's, it's a far greater skill to be able to um, curate, dissect and evaluate that knowledge than it is to be able to regurgitate something that you've been told um, in a class. But look, that's... that's Preaching to the converted, Ken. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah, yeah I, I, I probably am and, and I could probably talk on that one for far too long but that's probably but just would, wouldn't it be a great thing if we came out of this crisis and at least even in for third level no more exams sure yeah or, or next to no exams I, I i'm probably just going to use that as well as the an excuse for all those bad exam results that that that, that i did get so you know what what what, what can i tell you yeah. in terms of your your colleagues on other programs because obviously you know you you, you you're a lecturer in, in WIT of long standing. You're there 25 years, as you mentioned. Um, you would be regarded, obviously, as one of our digital champions um, in the past and would be something that many of your colleagues would, would look up to and would see as a trailblazer, indeed, um, in that. Some of your other colleagues, have they reached out much in terms of how do I do this or how, what would you advise I use for that? Or have you found those kind of, any of those kind of conversations surprising? It has. Um, one of the things that happened uh, was just before the crisis, we, we had uh, set up a department Slack channel, uh, which was very, very quiet. And all of a sudden it got very, very busy. Yes. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and, you know, people right across our department started experimenting with lots of different options and sharing their experience. So it was before, it was, uh, you know, yeah, when I get round to learning that and I'll try it maybe next year, Suddenly you had to do it. Everybody started trying and sharing their experiences. Um, and that, that was very, very good to see. Um, and people were asking for help. Um, and you just jump in and, and help out where you can. Um, uh, so that, that was one of, the, one of the first things. It started getting texts and emails and LinkedIn started lighting up as well, you know, <laughs> with uh, not just colleagues, but even um, outside of sure. work where people, everybody's trying to get online. Yeah. Uh, everybody wants to contribute. Um, so I've been helping a few people uh, outside. That, that's what we can do. You know, we're not on the front line, but if you can help frontline staff, um, I think that's great. You know, so. Brilliant. And, and, and I suppose I probably should add, and we touched on it at the start of the conversation, um, you had the hard one experience of the last three stroke four years now of the higher diploma um, and the suite of tools you've put together uh, for that and, and indeed the suite of tools that you've won, 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 won an award for. Um, so maybe you'd like to talk a little bit about that before we finish up. And, um, uh, yeah, thanks, Ken. Um, I've actually got, um, if anybody wants to see this, it's all open, right? Everything is free and open and uh, we, we share everything we do uh, openly. And so columndunfrey.com slash tutor stack is the website. And um, I'm just going to share here if I sure. can. Yeah. Um, and I'll probably take you through that. Um, can you see that okay? Looks good to me. Okay. So uh, Tutor Stack is what we won the award for. I say we because there's a whole team involved. Um, my colleague, Eamon DeLester, uh, um, Pete Windle, and um, uh, Laura encouraged us. Laura, Win uh, Laura Widger actually encouraged us to um, apply for the award. Um, so, um, yeah, there's a, there's a whole team behind it. Um, so what is it? It's a multi-layer technology stack providing modular, free and or open solution for Bold, which is branded and online delivery, uh, without product or vendor lock-in. So we're not, we're not saying you have to use specific technologies. It's uh, 
we we've looked at lots of technologies and we came up with a stack it's got four layers on the stack there's um instructional materials uh which is you know how you present your notes if you like uh, it could be a website it could be a learning management system but we've developed our own uh, in the lester uh, responsible for this and it's available on github uh, tutors or tutors ts is, is the current version um and that's how we present our materials to uh, students. So we have a card-based system and it's hierarchical and drilled down. Uh, then there's communications or community. And this is how we, we get that social presence, how we communicate online with our online students. And the, the tool that we found was fantastic. That was Slack. And we use that for, you know, chat, for text, uh, text chat, for voice calls, video calls and at one stage even for share, uh, screen sharing and remote desktop so we could you know with a uh, computing students if they were having trouble installing software we could take over their computer in a support call and help them uh, resolve what the issue was now slack we've been using that for a few years uh, last year slack uh, changed and they said zoom does the best voice and video calls on the market and they created an add-in. So um, that's something that we've been using for those voice and video calls now that we have Zoom. Uh, this, this is an old slide from, um, it's actually from last year, but uh, it, it's fine for just getting across what we're doing. Uh, third layer there is assessment and feedback. So this is for formal assessment. We use Moodle for students submitting their work, gets rid of all the GDPR issues. Everything is nice and safe and secure and uh, nice and simple. Um, Socrative is something we use for um, in, in classes for, for doing interactive uh, questioning. Um, I, I noticed tonight you were using Mentimeter, uh, so this is similar. Um, but what's nice about this one is it allows you to have your, you know, a whole quiz ready in advance and showing the, the charts and stuff very, very quickly. And then media was the other layer on our stack. Um, so we, we handle live. Uh, through YouTube Live, so we're doing live classes, um, but we can also have asynchronous, which is which is handled through YouTube on its own. Um, we encode all of that through a program called OBS, which has seen a massive uh, uptake in the last few weeks. This is um, uh, free software, and you use it for encoding video, and the video can be recorded or it can be streamed live. And, and again, that's a free tool. And it handles green screen and all of that as well. So it's, it's very nice. What's really good about it is you can set up different layouts, different scenes, um, and then you just press a button to, to switch. So you can effectively do live production um, while you're doing your class. Now, to make that a little bit easier uh, so that you're not having to look at this complicated tool, um, um, we use a thing called Stream Deck. Um, my, my colleague, Peter Windle, um, is big into gaming. So he's responsible for, you know, enlightening, enlightening us on using OBS. Also, this uh, Stream Deck, which is a effectively remote control. It's got 15 buttons. Uh, you can design the graphics on them, and you can program what those buttons do. So what we've tried to do is simplify the whole stack by programming a Stream Deck. And therefore, when staff want to teach online, they don't have to learn all the hard all the software. They just need to know what the buttons on, on this controller do and we don't even use all 15 so it's um it's a much easier way of, of teaching and then you want to do live or you want to do uh, pre-recorded it's exactly the same uh, workflow um, now we've been developing this a bit further uh, we've we've um we've got this notion of engagement dashboard where we uh, are tracking our students now seeing what they're doing when they're actually uh, taking the lessons you know whether they're doing it with us or later and this enables us to engage with them more and to, to see how they're getting on find out where they're having trouble and then take action take early action so that's in development at the moment uh, Eamon de Leicester's doing fabulous work there and uh, I think you'll see it at uh, the next EdTech conference whenever that's going to be um, and then we're also doing uh, some work on media management uh, so um, both the engagement dashboard and the media management have been uh, funded through the um, National Forum for Teaching and Learning. Uh, we've been funded through that. Under media management, what we're doing at the moment is looking at very efficient ways of splitting up long videos into short ones and taking out the short ones and making them into longer ones. Um, because 
people like to watch them. Our students, we've we've surveyed them and found that different different students like to look at uh, content different ways. So that that's kind of what we've been working on uh, to to make all this happen. The the, the left hand side there is what has gone through the tutor stack, um, but to make it happen, uh, we also have to figure out how can we try and get high production values uh, for relatively um, nothing, you know, really low, low price. Um, so we, we developed this notion of um, a pod um, and we have a green screen, there's lighting um, and then uh, everything that's needed to, to deliver video at a hopefully a higher uh, quality level. Um, so, so that's all there and look, any any of the conference we've, conferences that we've spoken at and any of the technology, you know, if you want to know more about them, there's, there's a whole other links there. Um, so we submitted this um, for um, the National Education Awards and uh, I'm just looking at their best use of education technology ICT initiative of the year. So um, we're delighted to, to uh, be shortlisted and subsequently then uh, we actually won it. So yeah, that's... Um, that's the whole spiel. <laughs> I'm not selling anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't sound a bit like it. Yeah, no, that, that, that was brilliant. And I think it, um, it, it'll be really interesting um, to people who, who, who are listening to the podcast. We've been talking, would you believe, for a, a little over half an hour. Um, time, flies when you're, uh, time flies when you're having fun. Um, there isn't an awful lot me to finish up by saying other than that, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure um, to have you on here um, and to get your, 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 your feedback, I guess, and uh, impressions of Gas to Goes Global tonight, um, of the COVID-19 remote teaching um, conundrum, I suppose, that we find ourselves in, and, um, and obviously to, to, to share uh, more about um, the telepods uh, and the, the whole tutor stack um, development. So, Colin Duffy, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very, very much. And um, Cheers, Ken. We, we, we'll have to do this again sometime. We'll, no we'll, matter. We'll, 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 we'll see you when, we're, when I'm uh, back on campus. Uh, hopefully, I should have this sorted out tomorrow and up online and all the rest of it. And sure, look, somebody might look at it. Uh, you I look at remember it. the press record, Ken, didn't you? I um, think so. <laughs> um, what, what's that red dot mean? Um, <laughs> <laughs> th thanks a million. Okay. Good luck. Cheers. <laughs> Bye.